All right, so I was about to put this uh, supercharger on the truck, and then I realized that I forgot to put the boost bypass on actuator, and so I'm gonna do that right quick, show you how this all works. All right, well, first off, here is the uh, new one that I got, and if you notice, you push, if you push up and you hold this port, put your finger over that port, it'll actually hold till you let go. Same here, push in, hold, it'll hold and it'll, it'll stay held until you let go. This one is the, the one I had on my truck just now, and uh, it doesn't do anything. From either of the ports, it doesn't hold. And actually, my buddy gave me an M90 one that I was going to use. It just has a little bit different bracket. Um, it would have worked as well. That's a good one, same. That's a good one there too. Um, but I ended up <clears throat> going with this John Bond Performance, just a place that I found online. Um, actually, JDM Engineering uh, sent me their way, but they're from um, Iowa, so that's kind of cool. Uh, pretty close to me, and therefore it arrived quickly, and I can put it on. I think it's actually used, though, like a takeoff or something. Um, looks Like I said, looks like it's looks like it's been used. It's a hundred dang dollars for this thing, but I don't know, maybe they don't make them anymore, or who knows, so. Anyway, good parts, I'll put them on and get it going. All right, so excuse the weird angle here, but I'm trying to get this all in one shot for you. Basically, what happens with this bypass valve is this allows the air to actually bypass the supercharger when you're idling. When you're idling, you don't need a bunch of boost. You don't need how much air this thing can um, produce. So what it does is when you're idling, this opens, this butterfly opens, and air can pass through. And then all of a sudden when you punch it, this slams shut by, you know, working of that uh, actuator. That slams shut, the bypass slams shut, and all the air comes through the supercharger and into your engine and is consumed. And then as soon as you crack the throttle again to let off, basically this opens back up and can allow the engine to not consume that much power. And it's basically run by um, vacuum, basically, or boost, you know. And so that's what that's what this does. So you basically mount it on here with these two little holes right there. And uh, all you have to do is flip this, flip this little arm over like that, slip that down in there, then flip it back, and then put it on. And you want it to be like, you know, just a little bit pushing down on this so that every time it lets off, it's gonna come and rest on the stop. And the stop should be adjusted so that when this when this comes to shut, it doesn't like bind up. You don't want it to, to get tight. So you, you might have to clean this all out and make sure everything's just working right. Um, so And adjust the screw so that it, it shuts but doesn't bind. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put these two bolts in here. Okay, so that's down just about where those uh, bolts are starting to get tight. And so now I'm just gonna push on that just, I mean, a nothing amount, so I know it's it's actually pushing against the butterfly and keeping it shut on the spring. Okay, so those are tight. So now what I can do is just pretend I'm gonna open this up and I should be able to put my finger over this and have it hold and see it held like that. And there it would slam shut. Same deal, I can open this up and hold my finger on it and it slams shut. So we should be good to go there. So here's the gasket. It's a reusable gasket, so you can just go ahead and set that on there, use the dowel pins to show you which direction it goes. So the supercharger's on, obviously, but uh, I have to get this pulley bridge on before I get all covered up. So um, basically, you got a nut there, you got a nut at the, or a bolt at the bottom, and then over here um, there would normally be a nut, and then there's another one tucked down underneath. Well, anyway, I have a um, LFP idler uh, bracket, and then obviously the idler, and so it takes these two little studs right here. You got to run those in, um, basically where those nuts would be. And that extends things out a little further. I got this janky little bolt that holds the top one. I don't really like that, but it's just what I have for now. So I'm gonna get that put in and maybe uh, change it up a little later. 
Alright, so this is my uh, boost and vacuum manifold that I ordered from Hose Hustler, Timothy White. And uh, I want to make sure that it doesn't corrode or um, have any other issues with the environment under the hood. So I'm actually going to run it through a uh, chemical conversion uh, line really quick at my work. And we'll see how it turns out. Alright, well that's how it turns out. It's got fresh chem film on it. Clear, clear chem film. So. I got my new, or my O-rings back on. I'm probably not gonna use those end caps, hard to say. But uh, yeah, it looks really sweet and uh, turned out nice. And so basically I want to mount this onto this uh, aluminum angle right here and I'm gonna make a bracket out of it. I'm just gonna kinda mount it onto the side of this like this and then of course trim it up and make it look decent, hopefully. First thing I wanna do is get, uh, get this put on here and then I'm gonna use transfer punches to actually make a point mark so I know where to drill the holes on this thing. All right, so I got these little dimples right here. So now I can drill those out uh, to the right size. All right, so now I got my uh, hardware just kind of put in there. I know it's gonna fit nice and flush on the bottom here. And so now I just need to get the holes right here so I can make the rest of this bracket. I took the main piece and I took it over to my miter saw and I cut off the end real nice, cut it down short. So it's basically the same length as the piece here. And so then also I took it over to the side of the supercharger plenum and I scrubbed it along, this, along those studs. So I made some marks here. So I'm gonna hit one and then I'm gonna get a more exact measurement on the other one, I think. All right, fast forward. Here we got it done. I made this little bracket right here. Got a little bit of an oval hole. But uh, yeah, that bracket is to hold this manifold. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on next to the supercharger. And then I'll tuck it in there real nice and close so that um, you can see it if you're looking, but uh, you probably probably mostly will be hidden by the um, air intake. So anyway, I have, this is uh, dash eight to eighth inch MPT uh, adapter. So I got that. And then all these holes I'll use and, and whatever else, I'll figure that all out later. But uh, generally, this is where we're headed. All right, so I got my hob switch that's like a pressure switch. I think it goes off at five PSI. That's for my booster pump. That's installed, got a little thread sealant on there. Then also same, uh, I have, this is for my boost gauge. I have like a pillar pod boost gauge, like auxiliary. This is the pickup for that gauge. So next I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on top of here so I can start um, planning out where everything's gonna go. All right, well after looking at it and putting it on and taking it off and putting it on, uh, I finally have this kind of the way I want it. Uh, I ran out of 90s. I wish I had more 90s. Um, I wish I had more everything. That's always how it goes, right? But um, I'm going to, I think, order a couple more of these. But so I put straights on here and here. But basically how this is going to work is this will be my input. This will come from the mid plate. It'll just loop up and in. And then this one will go to the top of the boost pipe bass. It'll come up and over like this. The, this one will come out to the fuel pressure regulator, which is over here. The boost gauge, which is over here, same. And that's the factory boost gauge. And then, which I could just delete, but I don't know, whatever, might as well tie it in. Then this one goes to the brake booster to give it um, vacuum to assist, you know. And then this is the HVAC system. So this runs around all the way behind the back of the blower and goes to like right in front of the passenger seat. Uh, there's a connection for the cab con cab controls and then this will be the source of that vacuum which will come up and over to the back of the plenum there's a port that i left and, and tapped earlier you probably saw that so anyway that's what we're going to do that's how i'm going to hook it up uh, i'm going to take a lot of fiddling i'm going to leave things a little bit long you know like i say it's it's super easy just pop these out snip and put it right back in for final touches but it kind of sucks to make things longer because you got to replace so uh, we're going to see if we can start getting this fitted up Okay, well I've just been connecting different lines, getting things set up, 
and I got to the brake booster and how to do that, how to connect to that. So I took the fitting off, it's a little check valve, and took the hose off too. And I just ramrodded the hose up in there. It fits basically perfect. And then to secure it in there, I'm gonna put a piece of heat shrink over this thing to hold that tube inside. And it's vacuum, so it should never really blow out. You know, it would always wanna suck in basically. So I'm gonna put a piece of heat shrink on there. I think that'll be good to go. All right, so I got my vacuum and boost uh, lines all sorted out here. You can kind of see where everything goes. Um, not perfect just yet. Like I said, I might change some, you know, straights out for 90s and other things like that. But pretty darn good. And everything's hooked up and sealed. And I kind of tested some of the spots by uh, just pushing air through it. And it seems to work fine. And uh, now I can uh, try and see about getting my catch can mounted. I think where I'm going to go is back, back in that corner right there. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if it fits.